Alright, hey guys, and welcome to my review of Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings. Uh, I hope I'm pronouncing it right, it's Shang-Chi uh, or Shang-Chi, uh, but I don't think it's Shang-Chi for whatever reason because that's what the character said in the film itself. Now, first of all, as for the actors, uh, Simu Lu, Aquafina, uh, Tony Chu, Ben Kingsley, Ben Kingsley, I don't want to talk about Ben Kingsley, okay? Let's just forget that he was in the film. He was the worst part of the film. Ben Kingsley is one of the best actors I have seen, seen on screen, right? His performances and his films are fantastic. Even in this movie, he is fantastic. But they gave him such a horrible role that I just hate it every time I saw him. But regardless, he is a fantastic actor and he just does so well. He, he, he steals the limelight. Like, you know, there's a scene where he sits in the car with, with the other characters, Aquafina and Simu Lu, and you only want to look at Ben Kingsley. Because he's just so captivating, he does his part. He acts as this moron who's an actor, who, as you know, is Travis Slattery from Iron Man 3. But despite him acting as a complete idiot, he's still more likable than, than the rest of the cast when he's there. But regardless, let's forget about him because he's not important in this film. He just plays a very small role. As for the rest of the cast, they do a fantastic... Um, they, have, they are all fantastic. The cast is brilliant. Uh, Michelle Yeoh is from my country, Malaysia. And... Uh, she is an amazing actress. I've always liked her uh, from the, since I saw her in James Bond. Uh, and yeah, she, she is amazing. There's no doubt. She does her part. Uh, this guy, uh, Tony, Tony, who acts as the father of um, uh, Shang-Chi, uh, is actually really, really likable. He's a really likable character. Uh, he's just that he has a very, very underwhelming and unredeeming ending. Uh, I feel like the moment that they redeem him is just a very short few seconds scene and uh, I feel that they could have done a lot more considering how much he goes through as a character in the story. Uh, Aquafina does a very nice role of playing the uh, comedian uh, as Katie in this film and she fills in the much needed role uh, uh, for, for sort of laughs basically. She doesn't do anything else. I wish she had more of an important role. Like in the even in the ending, she fires an arrow which, you know, hits the uh, the main like villain boss or whatever uh, in the throat, and she wins the seed because her arrow hit it all of a sudden. But they could have probably shown her training uh, in the archery as a vital point. Like could have shown it a little more importantly when they really cut short her scenes of her learning archery. They showed one scene of her like barely hitting shots and she's like Did you see that i almost hit it you know and whatever and that's it they never focused on her character enough to make her important enough for the ending but regardless she gets a moment where she actually wins the war by hitting the villain uh with her arrow which she, she fires and it helps uh, shang chi defeat it and as for the actor simu lu who played shang chi he's really really good in the role that he plays he's really likable uh he is very very talented in terms of his martial arts skills uh, he he, you know, de delivers his dialogues really well, and he seems really well. Uh, I know there are some people complaining about his looks. I have no issues with his looks. I think he looks great. I mean, honestly. Uh, but uh, whatever their complaints are, I think that's completely theirs. I, I have no complaints about people for the way they look. Right? That's never an issue for me. Like you can look like whatever, but it, it depend depending on your performance, you can show that your looks don't matter at all. Like, you could look as great as, um, okay, let's see, who's the best looking here? I don't know, maybe Fala Chen, or maybe actually Michelle Yeoh looked a lot better when she was younger. Like, no question. Aquafina doesn't stand, doesn't hold a candle to her. But on, in this film, Aquafina's performance is really good. So I think that's what's important, at least for me. Um, so anyway, when it comes to the story itself, so Shang-Chi basically starts off as this guy who is uh, hiding as Sean uh, in, 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 New York, I believe, and he's trying to make it out there as this, uh, you know, day-to-day uh, -day, uh, life sort of uh, person. You know, he just lives based on the job that he works day-to-day. -day. He does, he does, runs a few jobs. He works with Aquafina uh, parking cars as a valet, uh, valet, what do you call them? Is it an officer or is it valet uh, person? I don't know. It's like, a, it's like a valet guy, right? The valet officer. I'll call them officer, fine. So he, he works in, in Valley together with Aquafina, so they get fun they have fun driving fast cars and whatever. Um, and um, you know uh, then in the very next uh, like important moment, he's actually attacked by a bunch of henchmen who come to steal a pendant that he wears as Shang-Chi. And that pendant apparently is what will allow the um, 
antagonist to unlock this maze to find a hidden village. And the hidden village sort of reminds me of the story of um, of uh, Iron Fist, where uh, they find the portal to uh, to what is its name? Shao Lao, or Shao Lao is a dragon, right? Kun Kun Lun, yeah. They find find the portal to Kun Lun. So it's something like Kun Lun story, uh, where they have a hidden village, and the hidden village has mystical dragons and all these powers and stuff. Uh, they, they have animals and everything, you know, they have like a lot of mythical creatures. It's sort of like going to Alice in Wonderland type of, like a totally different world, you know. So, uh, I like that in a sense where it gives them uh, a whole new world to work with and it really aligns them together with uh, the abilities of Doctor Strange and the multiverse. And since we're going into this very mystical thing, I think Shang-Chi really opens that portal really well. Um, so, as for the story itself, he gets attacked. Uh, in a train by this this big dude, really amazing actor as well, who tries to get a, the dependent that he has, uh, and uh, he has this amazing fight sequence. The fight sequence in this film is some of the best I've ever seen. They are really really impressive, and he's a really good fighter, um, well choreographed and well skilled, well trained, uh, and very well composed as well. I think uh, you could not have done that fight scene better, the one in the train especially. But uh, we do not get that same quality of value for the rest of the film because a lot of the time there are just too many other things going on like we do have one other impressive scene which is they fight on the side of this building um when they come to steal the pendant of his sister so they need to have his pendant his sister's pendant and that's how they open this portal to uh this hidden village so they go to steal his sister's pendant and uh, yeah sister is this lady um anyway uh, she apparently is like this strong independent woman who was left behind by Shang-Chi So she built a empire of a fight club uh, Where she rules and whatever but the father just comes and wrecks both of them and takes them both in Takes their pendants and tells them that I gotta go and save your mom Who's locked away in this hidden kingdom And so I need to steal your pendants from you and I need to send people that will kill you And I know they can't kill you but I'm gonna send them anyway uh, Because I know they can't kill you And I know you'll kill them And I don't know why he sent them like I really don't like like he, he tells them that I knew that they can't kill you but he sends them to kill them and they die anyway so I think he just sends them as fodder to see if they are worthy enough or something like that I don't know it's some tough Asian love okay like I'm Asian right I've had some tough love in my life but if I had a dad like this man I yeah yeah okay so uh, this guy is a fantastic actor. I loved every scene he was in. It was very captivating. Uh, he he acts as is this warlord, this brutal, terrifying person who actually shows that he is a softer side when he falls in love and has two children, who is Shang-Chi and his sister. And um, uh, that entire story, that entire mystical story of them falling in love and you know this battle and whatever, it's very, very uh, close to a uh, lot of Chinese films. And I have watched Chinese films, by the way. So uh, there are a lot of Chinese films where you actually see this, this martial arts sort of moments between two characters that are going to fall in love and they both realize how skilled they both are. And more than often, okay, more than often, the guy loses to the girl and that's when he falls in love. Or the girl gets completely dominated by the guy and then he gets, and then she gets dominated by the guy. But yeah, that's that's another variety of the uh, another version of what happens. Uh, but anyway, in this version, he gets beaten by the girl, and then he he, he actually gets intrigued by the fact that he for, for once could get beaten, despite him having lived for centuries um, and uh, having controlled so many kingdoms. So he is actually the leader of the ten rings, and people call him the Mandarin, but he's just he's just. Um, He's just himself, I guess. Like, he doesn't really identify himself with any specific name. But he's just known as the leader of the Ten Rings. So this is the moment where they actually fight and fall in love with each other. And I found this really super cute, super nice, super fun. Um, and this is the sister, you know, uh, beating up Shang-Chi in her, um, her battle ring. This is his past and the flashback that he is. I found all this really amazing, really captivating. Like, if there was a story of just this warlord in his past with these Ten Rings conquering the world, I think I could, I could just keep watching these scenes. These scenes are amazing. The bus fight, one of the best parts of the film. And then we have this little moment where um, we see two sort of cameo easter eggs, sort of. We see um, Abomination being brought down to the level of the um, the King of the Sea, 
the 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 seeking from um, One Punch Man. That's what it looks like here, and he's fighting Wong. Uh, Wong uses some mystical powers to beat it or whatever, and I think they they just have fun with each other, entertaining people, and they make money off their bets. So, I'm not sure since when this started, like since when Wong got involved in all this stuff, but uh, yeah, this is what happens. Um, and and no one knows why Abomination is here. He's just there for comic relief. He's comic relief. Hulk and Abomination are comic relief. If you watch the Incredible Hulk film, it's the complete opposite of what they've done to them in the MCU, and I'm super pissed. All right, uh, I I don't even want to go there. Like they're known as the angry characters, but they are used for comic relief. That's the MCU guys. Um, whereas as for Shang Chi's character, actually, he is not really used for comic relief. He is a guy with good sense of humor, but a lot of the scenes are actually quite serious between him and his father and the relationship they have. And so what, what really happens in terms of the plot is that the father is actually being whispered to by some evil entity uh, that is guarded in the forbidden village, in this hidden village. They have like a gateway to another, another realm, a darker realm, and they are guarding this creature that uh, eats people's souls. And they apparently have been reaching him in the real world uh, and pretending to be his wife, coming to him in some form of vision to tell him that, uh, dear, I'm trapped behind this door, please come and save me. So he thinks his wife is calling him, whereas it's actually these creatures who are trying to um, sort of, uh, you know, captivate him using his voices, uh, I mean, using voice impressions of his wife and uh, lure him to, to rescuing them actually out of their uh, doorway, which they're locked behind in this forbidden village. So shang Chu finds out that he's actually being manipulated and decides to go and stop him. And that's the gateway that is there. Uh, this, they are now in the Forbidden Village uh, world, uh, which is another world. So it's like a world in a world in another portal world into something. And um, they defeat the, these evil entities. Uh, and shang Chu actually gains ownership of the rings. As he fights his father, the rings actually get, get like... Um, uh, sort of in a 50-50 balance. So he gets five rings, he gets five rings, and they fight each other with the rings. And this is not the story of the Mandarin from the comics in any way. The Mandarin in the comics actually has 10 rings that do 10 different things. Uh, whereas here, he becomes the guy from Kung Fu Hustle. Remember that guy in Kung Fu Hustle? Or, or yeah, it's Kung Fu Hustle, right? Yeah, the guy with the rings in his arms that fights people. Yeah, he, he actually turns out to be that. Regardless, the animation on the fights with the rings are... Uh, pretty cool, I would say. It's something different. Like, of course, it's it's a step down from what they've been doing before this because there's so many other superpowered characters with more crazy stuff. But it's in no way something that you can say that ah, oh, it's not, it's boring or whatever. No, it's not. It's okay. I, but I wouldn't buy the ten rings like, like as a toy if I was a kid. Like, I would still look for something like Thor's hammer or Iron Man's helmet. You know those sorts of things because I know the the MCU actually plans how to sell, how to best market things as a toy. And in this film, the toy that they introduced was this little like pet, this animal creature. But these rings are really not that, not that impressive. Uh, but I really like the, um, the, you know, the fight scenes and the choreography, the lighting and these really fast, intense fighting moments. Uh, you know, it, it really brings me back to all those Jackie Chan films I used to watch as a kid. Uh, you know, Jet Li movies. Uh, there's just so many of those that you know make me feel like we need more of this we definitely need more uh, it's really cool to bring kung fu back into the mcu i think or rather back into marvel because i believe the last i saw it was mostly in daredevil <coughs> and in iron fist and it really lacked in the mcu because we didn't have a character that can actually fight uh martial arts re that well most of them just fight each other like like regular fighters like sure captain america uses some martial arts but not like this guy, man. This guy is something else, all right? In terms of the power scaling <coughs> of what Shang-Chi has, I think he's in a decent place. I think he's somewhere between the strength of... Um, <clears throat> let's see. Without the Ten Rings, I would say he is um, somewhere below Black Panther's strength without the 10 rings he's like really really strong peak performance i think he would beat anyone that is not super super strong like any character that is not super powered he would beat in a in a fight but any character that is super powered he would lose to and with the 10 rings i think he would be almost on par with um he would definitely beat captain america he would definitely beat black panther 
but I don't think he could beat anyone else above their power. Like Hulk, no, Hulk would just smash him. Uh, Thor would definitely limit, obliterate him. Iron Man would obliterate him with a single uh, nuke. Um, Ant Man, yeah, he he could probably beat Ant Man. I think that's where he is. He's around Ant Man levels of uh, level of power. Um, I think with the rings, he can definitely beat Spider Man too, because the rings make him really really powerful. Uh, but without the rings, he is no match for any of them. So I think he's a pretty decent character in terms of the balance in power. Uh, and since the rings obey him now, um, he is their rightful ruler and he will definitely be back, I guess, in the MCU in the future films to come. And I can't wait to see more of him because he's a pretty cool actor, cool character, uh, well established. But as for the plot and the story itself, it's still pretty hollow. Uh, give me one sec. All right, apologies. The rain here really got pretty crazy, huh? <laughs> So, um, yeah, uh, she, the, the, the story itself, I feel, is pretty, like, it's, all the, it's everything we've seen. Like, I've seen this in a lot of Asian films. So maybe for Westerns, if they haven't watched Asian movies, they don't know this kind of, this format of this film. Of the father that's not accepting, the martial art fight that makes people fall in love, the general Kung Fu shenanigans and whatever. But as for those of them who ha are familiar with this from, you know, the Asian side of things, we all have seen this. The story is like very familiar. It's like pulled out from multiple different reference films, multiple historical moments, uh, and whatever. And yeah, we have definitely seen this before. But regardless, it's not. It's not to say it's not welcome. It's definitely welcome. It's definitely something we want more of because we haven't had these in a while. So it's okay. It's still refreshing in that sense. But as for whether it is interesting and you know, there's any plot twist or anything intelligent about this film, I don't think so. I think besides the amazing martial arts, everything else is pretty straightforward, I would say. Super predictable. You know exactly what's going to happen most of the time. Uh, you know, they're just going to go. They're going to beat whatever monster comes out. Uh, and then they're going to beat the father. And then he's going to get the rings. And then the father is probably going to sacrifice himself to redeem the character. Because that's the only way to redeem him. Blah, blah. So yeah, it's super predictable. Super straightforward. But it's still a really fun movie. A uh, really good cast. Uh, really good acting. Uh, I feel I wish that they actually gave this guy a better redemption story towards the end. I felt it was a little bit too shallow, uh, considering how intelligent and how powerful he is as a warlord. I think that uh, they should have given him more of a 50/50 instead of a. Nah, I'm just gonna try to save my wife behind this wall. That's obviously releasing demons. I think that's a bit too much. Uh, if they showed that he was under some mind control, I think it would be a bit more believable. But he seemed just super himself. Uh, Michelle Yeoh as well had a decent part to play in terms of being the mentor or behind the I mean in the hidden village to a lot of people uh, so yeah she actually might come back I think as well so yeah anyway for me uh, here's my rating let me pull it up du -du 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 -du. and oops one second okay and there you go 6 out of 10 it's a good movie I would say this is a good movie. It's something that people will definitely talk about. It has got excellent fight choreography, uh, a very good lead actor, and I don't think that many people actually didn't like it. Like I know people complain about uh, the actor's look or whatever, but once again, that's not my issue at all. I find it super fun, super entertaining. But as for the plot, it's super predictable. Uh, I wish they had something a little more interesting. Uh, and we do see a lot of uh, characters being built up. Like I'm the strong, independent woman and that's it and then it's like they're just adding characters for inclusiveness with no real weight to their character itself like even aquafina as i said just this one scene of her learning to to, to play archery to, to sorry learning archery and then in the finale she just can suddenly fire the arrow that hits perfectly at the right spot at the right time it's not even luck like if they'd shown that she got lucky maybe it's okay maybe it was like her purpose in life or maybe they actually showed her training hard like day and night working hard I think that would have been cool too, but they didn't have either of those. So it's just like, she becomes a Mary Sue towards the end. This is your generic Mary Sue. She's just there, born Mary Sue. Uh, and then uh, there's uh, shang Chu who has been trained by his father to be an assassin that actually fulfills his role uh, as the protagonist who uses his uh, amazing combat abilities uh, and gains the ownership of the rings to defeat the villain. And there's actually a real, like, I think that's a dragon. This is really beautiful CGI dragon in the film. So the graphics are really amazing. The music is really amazing. It's a very good production value. Uh, but, you know, the, the better fights in the scene, like, all the better fights in the scene are unfortunately in the first half of the film. Uh, yeah, all the better fights in the film, sorry, are actually in the first half of the film. 
the second half of the film is actually more mystical, more magical, and less impressive fights. Uh, that's my only complaint, I think, uh, in terms of the fighting. But as for the choreography, as I said, it's amazing. But the story is super predictable, super straightforward. I think there's nothing really too special about it. But I really want more of it. So it's a 6 out of 10 from me. I really hope it gets a 7 or 8 in the next time. It will start something better. And uh, please, I, I like that it's also a so sort of a soft reboot. Because they established that now this is the Mandarin. Um... Uh, Travis Slattery has nothing to do with it anymore. This is the Mandarin, and now the Mandarin is dead. So there's no Mandarin anymore. So the Mandarin was brought in a single film to die in another film as another person, and that's about it. Uh, it's nothing really that, uh, nothing, nothing impressive. I would say it's just about it. It's just cool to see this, as this is something refreshing and something new. So that's about it from me. Uh, a little bit longer of a review because it's actually a decent film, I must say. So yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care.